So a couple months back, a movie was released in the theater called The Shade, and it was a limited release, and it was at one theater by my house, and I was going to go see it by myself because Kaylee was working and I had some free time, and I decided ultimately not to go because the movie came in at two hours and seven minutes, and I felt like with the ratings it was getting... It just wasn't worth the time to drive because it's a further theater from me than I typically go to. And I just thought, nah, you know what? I'm just going to wait for VOD. I'm sure it'll be on VOD soon enough. And so I watched it tonight and let's talk about it. So The Shade. Um, Now, this is about a young man who's dealing with with the grief and loss of his father when he's young and his brother returns home and their relationship is strained and estranged. Um, He also has a younger brother, a much younger brother who he has a pretty good relationship with and he's trying to deal with his demons. Um, So it's one of those kinds of movies, very heavy on the dialogue. Um, Okay, so let's just get right to it. Um, Overall, this is very heavily a drama. Um, I could see people likening this to something like The Babadook, uh, where we're dealing with a character's mental breakdown and the monster and what's going on in the film is all metaphors for, um, you know, guilt or, uh, you know, grief or, you know, what have you. So I, I could see that, that comparison. Now the Babadook is like far superior to this movie. Um, and I'm not going to say that this movie is bad, but the problem that this film has is, what I had feared with that runtime. And guys, as you know, I am no hater of ro- long runtimes. I mean, there's does runtimes don't matter to me as long as they're justified. And I just don't feel that this film justifies its runtime at over two hours. It's just pretty ridiculous to me because I find this film to be fairly repetitive. And you could tell this exact same story in 90 minutes and the film would be better for it. If you cut us 40 minutes of this film out, it would be better paced. Your audience, you know, you wouldn't lose your audience with how long you drag things out. And I think ultimately there's a a pretty good movie in here. It's just bogged down by a you know, over bloated runtime. Unfortunately, I think this film is pretty well shot. I think the film is pretty well acted by our, by our lead here. I think he's, I think he's given a pretty good performance and, and I do believe he's dealing and struggling, uh, with, with his past traumas and, you know, uh, trying to juggle his girlfriend and his brother's return and his home life and his job uh, shout out to Brandon Sexton the third from Empire Records, uh, as well as Session Nine. Uh, love that guy. My name's not fucking Warren for anyone who remembers Empire Records. Um, so it's cool to see him. He has a very bit part here as the like manager of the pizza joint that he works at. There's just so many scenes in this that I feel are unnecessary. Like we're just drawing things out, and I don't feel like the film is better for it. Um, And I did like some of the, I I liked the monster, the demon. I thought that was, that was a cool addition here. Something that was, you know, it's not super, super unique, but I I enjoyed it. I, I liked the look of it. And there's at first, the very, very last shot of the movie kind of made me like <laughs> I don't know I, I I was off put by it at first thinking it was silly and then you know a few moments passed and I was kind of like you know what actually no 
I, I like that because what this really is, is a metaphor for dealing with anxiety. Um, and as somebody who suffers with anxiety, and I think that's why I'm, I'm going to be more tolerant of this film overall than most is that I am an anxiety sufferer, like a deep anxiety sufferer and having this, this demon follow you around this fucking absolute curse that anxiety is, and it manifests itself in this film in a, in a, you know, a physical manifestation, but this being a metaphor for that, and it being symbolic of that, um, I definitely resonated with that heavily. And with the very final scene, I 100% get what we're saying there. And that imagery actually thinks works for me. At first, I wasn't taking it that well because I just thought it was kind of silly. But then, as I said, I, I kind of sat with it for a second and was like, you know what? No, because this is anxiety, this is, a, this is actually the kind of the perfect end moment the last frame that sticks in your mind with this movie so i i do appreciate that i i really appreciate uh, what they are going for here so i i think the film is is somewhat successful at what they're trying to achieve i just really feel like it's too self-indulgent with its runtime and i think that someone needed to be a little more honest with the filmmakers here and say, look, we really do need to cut this down. And if you want to release a director's cut alongside of this, I mean, you can do whatever the fuck you want, of course. But I think that for main, like most audiences, if you had cut this down to a 90 minute runtime, and then, you know, if it was getting uh, more attention and, and, and better reviews, then you can release like on a on a physical media release or even on VOD you can release your director's cut this version for people who want to see more who want to spend more time with this people who really really enjoyed it um but i think that this runtime as it's theatrically released is is just too much and i i've said that i've said that to uh you know too much at this point but i don't know and maybe i should edit down this review as as the hypocrite that i am um, but yeah, I, I feel like most people are going to be feeling that. And I, and I don't think they're going to forgive the film as much as I did because of how much I actually connected with his plight. Like I, I did empathize and because of that, I, I, I did ultimately, I, I was ultimately like, oh, okay with the film. Like I liked it, but it's too goddamn long um and repetitive and it just doesn't go anywhere in all those scenes so you know for the sake of not being repetitive myself uh, i'll end it here but the shade uh one good thing that this movie definitely did is that i have been singing the song from silver chair called shade uh, in my head all day since i put this movie on because i love that fucking song i love that album frog stomp if you haven't listened to silver chair in a long time you should pick them back up they're fantastic uh i think they were like 15 when they released their first album which just is always so mind-blowing to me so i think like daniel johns and, and and company in that band are like my age like i started listening to them when i was 15 and, and i think their records have just come out uh, so it's kind of wild because, you know, anyway, I'm not going to go to the tangent. Sorry. Uh, the shade, it is available right now for rental if you want to check it out. Um, so, you know, it's a mixed bag for me, but, uh, yeah, you, you got my thoughts. All right. I'll see you in the comments. Adios. <laughs>